Hey everyone, it's the Inner Nerd. If you've seen me before will know I don't really make civilian vehicles. In fact, I've only made one, and it was this, Tamu's Ducati 888. If you missed this video or want to see it again, follow the link in the card above or follow the link in the description below. So I thought it was time to make another, a car this time. This is Aishima's Lamborghini Huracan Performante. So I started by making the engine, some nicely detailed parts and I added some Jubilee clips on the air tube with Tamiya tape. The chassis came as one piece and the wheels well needed to be joined. I added some filler to smooth out the join, but most of it won't be seen behind the wheel. Surprisingly, there are very few reference images of a Huracan engine block. Since it's basically the same as the Audi R8 V10, I used a picture of that instead to pick out the details. To get a different metal texture on the exhaust, I used alclad aluminium. This will be a contrast to a rough surface made by the semi-mat on the block. The polished metal paints are better applied over a gloss black primer. This helps the metal shine and be slightly reflective. Then it was time to move on to the interior. I primed all the parts with Mr. Surface of 1500 black again to give them a nice satin base coat. I found this image of the Huracan Performante interior and liked the colour split, so I took this information and transferred that onto the model. I base the seats in what would be the exterior colour to match. I'll explain a bit more about this later. There's also an accent line running along the dash and doors, so I copied this too. The Performante variant of the Huracan was the first to use Lamborghini's forged carbon effect. This will be difficult to replicate as the real thing is effectively made up of carbon shards 
bonded with the resin that gives off a random glittering effect. I tried a few colour mixes and methods using metal colour paints. The best I found was Tamiya's X32 Titanium Silver. I applied this straight from the bottle using a piece of packing foam and stippling it onto a gloss black base coat. The randomness of the sponge helps create large and small specks seen on the forged carbon on the real car. The amount of passes depends on how thick you want the effect to be. The more passes, the more silver the part becomes. I thought that just painting the interior wasn't enough, so I made a pattern of the dash top roll with tape which I could transfer onto material. Then I got hold of some Alcantara, the material used on the actual Lamborghini, and cut the pattern out. The Alcantara has a nap or pile, so I aligned this up to match that of the real car again. The pile will brush smooth towards the rear of the car once it's installed. After a quick test fit, I used thin PVA glue to stick the cover to the part. Even though the pedals wouldn't be seen much, I couldn't resist using AK's chrome paint to make them shine. To get the brake calipers a bright yellow, I base them white. The white will fill out the opacity of the yellow, which would take several layers to build up on its own. After all the chassis components were complete, I coated them in Super Clear 3 gloss varnish, ready for an oil wash. I use AK's panel liner to deepen the shadows and recesses of the engine block and brakes. And then once dry, I remove with a cotton bud dampened with white spirit.
bodywork came all as one piece. There are a few mould lines that stuck out straight away, so I removed those with 1200 grit sandpaper. and then deepen the panel gap so they didn't get filled with clear coats after the painting. The spoiler struts will be painted black, but I thought it would be easy to assemble them now to get a good bond to the plastic. Next I rubbed the whole body shell down with 1200 grit sandpaper to give a roughened surface for the primer. Then cleaned the shell with alcohol cleaner to get rid of any dust and fingerprints. I apply Mr. Surfacer 1200 grey, thin to around 50% with self leveling thinner to give a smooth primer coat. I also primed the bumpers and other bodywork in Mr. Surfacer Black, ready for their painting to begin. The kit came with some very good pre-cut masks for the windows. Strangely you don't get any for the side windows so I made them for myself with Tammy Irregular and Curves masking tape. Now that the body shell is dry, I sanded smooth with 2000 grit sanding sponge to remove any imperfections. The primer showed up more mould lines and imperfections in the build, so I removed these the same as before. I filled the gap between the bumper and quarter panel with super glue. This would dry harder than filler and not crack, making a smoother and more resilient join. Then I could rescribe the lost panel line manually using a scribing tool. The join was then cleaned up with some extra thin glue. I used Mr. Servicer White to prime the shell for the colour coat. This would help the opacity of the colour and build the brightness I needed, much like the brake caliper we saw earlier. The 
colour I'll be using is Lamborghini's Verde Artemis Colour Shift Metallic. The paint is available from Zero Paint and comes as a two part set. The sky blue is applied over the primer and will act as a base for the metallic. The darker metallic colour is slightly transparent allowing it to work with the sky blue base coat making it colour shift in different lights. The colour was first available as a 40th anniversary colour for the Merchilago but is also available on request currently as seen on this Aventador S. Notice that the light change also makes the paint appear more or less blue. I apply the sky blue base coat in thin layers to build the colour. It's important to spray zero paints thinly and not allow any wet spots as these will shrink when dry and pull the plastic into a rough texture. A light sand with 3000 grit sponge, prepare the surface for the metallic next. Then it was time for the magic to happen. I apply the metallic top coat over the base, again in thin, light coats. The metallic is very thin and took around 7 layers to build up the opacity enough to match that of the real car. This was almost a full 30ml bottle. Before I went for the full on clear coat, I sealed the paint in with Tamiya's X22 clear. This was to protect the paint against the thinners in Super Clear 3, which can be quite aggressive if applied over some paints. After that had dried, I applied the proper clear coat with Mr. Colour Super Clear 3, thin with self leveling thinner. This was applied in wet coats to dry in a smooth and glossy finish. Now the paint was sealed in and the surface was glossy enough to apply the decals, I went ahead and applied those with Tamiya Mark Fit Strong. Then I applied three more wet coats of Super Clear 3 to build up the varnish ready for a flattened polish. I used Super Clear 3 over Zero Paints 2K Clear because it's softer and easier to polish using the modelling's polishes. The 2K Clear dries incredibly hard and I think it's a bit overkill for a scale model since you don't need the robustness of a hard clear coat. Even though I'd used self leveling thinners and sprayed it at low air pressure the surface still showed some orange peeling. I began to flatten the varnish using 2000 grit sponge and water to lubricate the surface. Then I used 3000 sponge followed by 6000 to further smooth the varnish. The sanding of the varnish makes the surface turn back to matte, which now needs to be polished. I used Tamiya's polishing compounds to gradually buff up the varnish to a full shine. Starting off with the red tube, coarse, 
I polish the model with a soft buffing pad. The course already starts to show the reflective surface, but it's not quite as shiny as you can get it. So next up was to use fine and then finish compounds to really get the paintwork to shine. With the bodywork complete, I moved on to the other body panels, spraying them GX2 gloss black. Like mentioned earlier on the interior, the Performante features forged carbon panels on the exterior too. Using the same method as before, I applied the carbon effect onto the required areas. Unlike the interior panels, these parts are a gloss finish. The titanium silver looks a bit too bright on these exterior panels, so I tinted them darker using Tamiya Smoke. The brake light cluster was a real pain to assemble and attached to the bumper and when I put it into the car it just wasn't fitting in the gap it was intended to. So I left it out and applied the bumper without it. I used Tamiya's smoke to tint the brake light lens and then attached those without the cluster. Once the chassis was inside, you won't be able to see the lack of brake light in the darkness. The kit is made up of several pre-coloured sprues. The headlights and some other small parts are chrome plated, which needs to be removed. I've soaked them in oven cleaner to remove the coating and then they can be painted. Then it was time to attach the clear parts. I do this with PVA glue since it dries clear and the excess can be removed with a damp cotton bud. Before fitting the side windows, I picked out the window seals with a Sharpie pen. Although this is a static model, the wheels are attached with rubber bushes. This will allow the wheel to spin to a certain degree and just push fit onto the axle. 
The rear bumper is different on the Performante, so this section of the rear arch needs to be removed to match the bumper profile. The mating of the body show was a bit of a pain, so I did this off camera, then applied the final pieces of the body and the model was complete. So that's it, my first ever scale model car is finished. I hope you enjoyed and if you'd like to see me make more of this kind of thing, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like and subscribe to my channel to follow my latest projects. To see more projects like this, why not jump into one of my playlists? And for some behind the scenes, give me a follow on Instagram at theinnernerd underscore insta.